Yes, that's right. The clip you just saw was shot in RAW on a Super 35 camera for $150. You can record 14-bit RAW files straight onto the SD card and it even has a flip-out screen. You can also record audio internally over a mic input and it also has quite good battery life. But there are some limitations to it. The camera I'm talking about is the Canon 600D or T3i. The amazing people from Magic Lantern hacked this camera to be able to record raw video internally onto the SD card. Let's take a look how this works and what you can expect. First you need a fast in-camera formatted SD card and download the nightly build from the Magic Lantern website. Just be aware that this hack can brick your camera so if something goes south I won't be reliable for that, you do that on your own responsibility. After copying the files onto the SD card and putting the SD card inside the camera, you do a firmware update and you can start using Magic Lantern on your camera. There are many different flavors of aspect ratios, frame rate or resolutions. So you have to find the perfect balance for the project you want to do. For me personally, I found the 1600 by 600 pixel resolution to be the best because I could shoot a couple of seconds, uh, three to six seconds to be exact. And I think that's good enough for impressions video like the one you've seen before. You see the right speed onto the SD card is the bottleneck of this camera. That is why you have to find a balance of what you want to use. The lower the resolution or the lower the frame rate, the longer you can record. You could record continuous in RAW on this camera, but that only has a resolution with a width of 960 pixels. That's not a lot. That's not even the width of a 720p image. And you also get a severe crop the lower the resolution gets because it only uses the center portion of the image to get the lower resolution. But if you don't care about resolution at all, you could use this thing as a proper raw shooting cinema camera. Another drawback is that you don't really know what's in the frame. The camera draws a little frame on the outside of your image as long as you are not recording. As soon as you hit the record button, the frame vanishes and you have to guess where the framing is. But since you have the framing guide, um, you can guess it where it is. Those are some pretty steep downsides. So is it even worth it? It depends, because the internal H.264 recording of the camera isn't that sharp. So even the 1600 by 600 RAW recording is far sharper and has at least a stop of more dynamic range than the internal recording of the camera. So for image quality and sharpness alone, it's an upside from the internal recording. But I would never go around and say that this camera can replace a proper cinema camera that can shoot RAW from the get-go. And even if you compare the sharpness, yes, it's sharper in comparison to the internal recording, but if you take a newer camera that is price-wise uh, very comparable, like the Panasonic GX80, the GX80 simply has far more sharpness in its image. Since you record Magic Lantern's own MLV RAW format, you need to convert it. I used the MLV app and converted the image to a ProRes HQ with a Alexa Log C conversion. This is an extra step for your workflow, so you have to consider that, but I think it's far easier and much faster than it used to be. But I have to say, despite all the drawbacks and workarounds, it's worth it. Uh, the image is amazing for what it is for a $150 camera. You can shoot raw video, you can experiment with a raw workflow, you can take the footage and grade it and just take a look at it. If this is something you want to do, you can up your color grading game or just train your artistic eye. And you don't always need 4K, sometimes HD is enough and if you sharpen up the footage a bit in post, I would say it's good enough to watch it on your smartphone. And there is some aliasing, so if you don't shoot wide establishing shots with a lots of fine detail all the time, you will be fine. And what we also shouldn't forget that this still can record H.264 up to 30 minutes all the time if you want to use that. And it has a mic input, so you could record better audio than with the internal mics. 
And last but not least, this is still a stills camera you can shoot 18 megapixel raw photos with. So I think it's a good start for everyone who wants to play around and want to take a look at a raw workflow and just want to play with raw video. Uh, but if you can spare a few more bucks, there are some alternatives. The heck was originally featured in the Canon 5D Mark III, which could record perfect HD image in RAW. Uh, it's still one of the best options. There are cheaper options like the Canon 5D Mark II, the Canon 70 and the EOS M. But this camera was lent to me by a dear friend and I found listings uh, for this camera for only 100 euros. So this is just so ridiculously cheap. If you want to take a look at other brands, I would say you should take a hard look at the Blackmagic cameras. For example, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, the original one, is still a very good option that can record full HD RAW video. But it's hard to find it cheap nowadays. If you want to have it for under 700 euros, for example, it's already a challenge to get it. And if you don't need the whole uh, raw fuss and only want to shoot good video on a cheap camera, I have some recommendations where you can check out the reviews on my channel, such as the Panasonic GH4, GX80 or GH2. I must say, I had a lot of fun working with Magic Lantern on this camera. It's amazing what the people from Magic Lantern were able to get out of an entry-level DSLR, which is proper raw video recording, even if it has its limitations. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please thumbs up on this video. And if you have any questions about this camera and the raw video workflow in general, just ask in the comments and if you are interested in the Canon 600D as a video shooting device in 2021, you should let me know in the comments down below also. And if you want to know what cool filter system I'm using in front of this lens, just subscribe to the channel and you will see in next week's video. I hope you have a nice day and create something extraordinary.